Hey guys, and welcome to episode 6 of Stories of My Life, the Halloween special. And today I'm going to be telling stories about Halloween, for the most part. Just a, just a couple of memories of Halloween from the past. Now let's go back to Halloween 1997, where I went as Batman. That means my mom bought me a Batman costume, but when they came to trick-or-treating, I didn't want to wear it for whatever reason, so she had to carry the costume and I wear regular clothes and you can see in the home video where we're trick-or-treating I'm wearing like what a blue shirt and some shorts that was my costume I would be pretty mad if my kid said I want to go with Batman and then when Halloween comes I don't want to wear the costume well if you're not wearing a costume you're not trick-or-treating and then Halloween 1998 I went as Zorro I remember that the further back I actually have a decent memory of Halloween I went to Zorro that year, had the mask, the toy sword, the cape, it was pretty awesome. Halloween 1999, I went as a ghost, stereotypical ghost costume with a bed sheet and holes in it where they, for the eyes. And I went to the Halloween dance at school and I danced with this girl named Emily. And she was dressed as a ladybug where we were dancing and I tripped on my own costume. And my mom caught a picture of that. But in the picture, it looks like I'm break dancing, so it's all cool. Halloween 2000. I mentioned Halloween 2000 when I was talking about the last video how I was scared by the scream mask, but I cannot remember right now what I went as that year. I know 2001 I went as an executioner. The reason I remember that is because that's the first Halloween after we moved to the house where I lived from 2001 to 2014. It's the house I lived in the longest and that was, that was the, the first Halloween after moving there. But I cannot remember what I dressed up as in 2000. 2004 I was the Grim Reaper. I actually remember the toy Scythe had that for a while. 2005, I was a pirate, and so was my cousins. <laughs> we were both pirates, and we had a pirate sword fight with a plastic sword, and my mom actually filmed it. So my mom would take her the camcorder everywhere. She, and I don't remember whose sword it was, but one, one of us lost our sword when the other one hit it, and it fell into the bushes. Um, Halloween 2006, I was Scream. Ghostface, I faced my fears. Uh, that was when I started getting into the movie. Halloween 2007, I was Gara, And from that year on, I would always make my costumes. I would buy stuff for it, but I would make it. So I was Gara that year from Naruto. Uh, I spray painted my head, my hair like a scarlet red. I got my cousin's boyfriend at the time, one of my other cousins, who by the way, her, one of her stories is gonna come up pretty soon. but. He uh, he got a sharpie, a red sharpie, and drew the the Japanese love symbol that Gara has on his forehead. I got some guy liner, my first time wearing eyeliner, and uh, got like a black shirt and pants. It was pretty cool. It was pretty legit, really. Looking back, the only part that sucked is if any of you guys ever actually watched Naruto, you know that Gara has this giant bag of sand. It's like looks like two boulders on his back. Yeah. What we did was we got a backpack, like a sack, and we just filled it with a little bit of sand, so it was like, like a little lump. Like imagine, imagine this, but filled with sand. Not a plastic bag, but like a, one of those little backpacks that you fold up like that, little cheap ones. 2008, I was... A Predalien from one of the Alien vs. Predator movies. I've never seen those movies, but I'm like I mentioned in the last video, I'm a huge Alien fan, and they had one of the masks at Party City for like 80 bucks or whatever with the gloves. And I thought I think the gloves with the gloves it was like 100 bucks, but I thought that was so badass, and I begged my dad to buy it, and he did. So I had this awesome Alien mask. It's basically the Alien head, but. Instead of the long penis-shaped protrusion that comes out, it was a little more. Uh, it's a little more condensed, so it's alien-shaped but kind of predator size with the the little dreadlock tentacles that the predator has, like that, and then these cool rubber gloves with these uh, alien fingers. And um, that's all I had. The rest of the costume, here's what I did. I got part of the screen costume. Wore that. Wore like a black sweater underneath to cover my entire arms. Or like some black pants, some black shoes, and I put a belt as my tail. <laughs> that was my costume. It was a uh, half awesome, partly awesome, like 25% awesome, 75% crap. But I remember 
that morning in school, well, we were, uh, I was with my cousin and some friends, and we were just, uh, I think it was during, actually, I think it was during lunch, and during lunch, you get your food, but you could sit pretty much anywhere, they have all these tables everywhere, and I didn't bring the masks, because we were allowed to bring masks, but I brought my gloves, they dared me to go over to this, this group, and it was a, and I went behind this girl, and I just went, hi, <laughs> she screamed so freaking loud, but that costume was a uh, great mask, <laughs> shitty costume, shitty body costume, and oh my god, the summer of the following year, we made a movie with that costume where I was the alien, we called it Alien Attack in the House, I, I did not even try for that movie, I was wearing the, the mask on, I had a belt again for my tail, I had gloves, you know what color shirt I had? A red shirt. I had a red shirt, and I was supposed to be an alien. Anyway, 2009, I went as Coach Z from Homestar Runner, who if anyone know, if anyone doesn't know what Homestar Runner is, it's this, uh, this old web series, and there's a character named Coach Z, who is like, he wears a baseball cap, I think it's purple, not, I don't remember. His face is like completely white, uh, the only facial features he has is like two giant eyes, and he's got like a green, I don't know if it's a bodysuit or what, he's got like a green body, no, it's like kind of like, like he's in a green man from Always Sunny, the kind of bodysuit, it's all green, and he's got like a, like a medallion with the letter Z on it, and uh, it's a character from Homestar Runner, it's a cartoon, so uh, it makes sense if you look at it in the cartoon, but I, I tried going at it, because I remember watching every, uh, October, the website they would post like fan like they'd have a character named Strongbad who read who looks at the the fans who dressed up as characters from the series, and he would like make fun of them like oh your costume sucks like that. Well, I wasn't gonna submit my costume, but I I got inspired to go as a co as a character from that series, so I went as Coach Z. I got these green sweatpants, green turtleneck, and this was uh, back in Florida where it's hot year round, even still in October. So it was pretty sweaty in there, but I, I got a green sweat, green turtleneck, green sweatpants, spray painted, spray uh, painted my face white, got a cap on, and like, I think we cut out a Z. I don't think anybody recognized what I was, but it, it was a cool little costume. 2010, honestly my lamest costume. I went as a ghost again like it did back in 99, except instead of an entire sheet, I, it was part sheet and then white face paint and like greenish whitish hairspray color. It wasn't a bad costume, it was just eh. 2011 I went as Kurt Cobain and the funny story about that, not Halloween that year wasn't that special but how, there was a Halloween party a few days before and it was the first time I ever got drunk. I got, it was at a, it was a cousin of mine's girlfriend at the time's 21st birthday, I was 17 years old, and there was a lot of alcohol. My first time drinking, I got pretty bad, to say the least. I got, it was also raining, so I got soaked, and then one of my other cousins, she took me, it was, my parents have been divorced since, uh, they've been separated since 2008, divorced since 2009, but we would spend every two weekends with my dad. Well, that weekend was, I was supposed to be with my dad, but my aunt, cousin's like, yeah, I'm not taking you to your dad like this, I'm taking you in the morning. So... Funny story is, since this was at my cousin's girlfriend's birthday party, it was at my cousin's house. What are you doing? Cats chasing a freaking fly. Anyway, so my aunt was there, and she sees that I'm drunk, and she calls my mom. And my aunt is like, okay, a little backstory. This, my, this aunt is like the cool mom type of aunt, where back when we were younger, she took us trick or treating. Or if anyone did not get candy, usually it's the kids that are doing egging. She will be the one initiating the egging. She'd be like, "All right, let's go at your house." But I wasn't necessarily in trouble for being drunk. But she was, you know, she's just like, "Okay, if you're gonna be drunk, just be careful. Don't do anything stupid, because I could get in trouble." But she called my mom to let her know, and <laughs> she put her on the phone. And I'm like, "Hi, mom." And my mom's like, "It's like, don't be drinking." And I'm like. Oh, and I, and I put the blame on my cousin, the same cousin from the Chocolate Factory story. I put the blame on him, and he's like, what? The, take me out of this. This is a, a little, uh, just to clarify, this aunt is the mom of the cousin that was going to scream that scared both me and my other cousin. But that was my first time being drunk, and I got a picture of that. Let's see if I can find it. 
The Kurt Cobain costume is pretty easy to make. It's just flannel shirt and all that. Nirvana shirt. This is more like my uh, everyday high school fashion than it was the costume. If I could find that picture. There we, there we go. Alright, that's me right here. I know, I look extremely gay, fabulous, and drunk. But, uh, that was the uh, first time I ever got drunk. Shit. So that was what I was for Halloween 2011. 2012, I was Slender Man. I got a black suit, white undershirt, black pants, black dress shoes, and a white pantyhose, which we cut a little hole so I could see out of, because I tried, let me see if I could do the whole faceless thing, or face, yeah, no facial features, could not see out of that, so I had to cut up some holes. I was recognized by some kids, so that was fun. Halloween 2013, I didn't even have a name for it, but it was a character I completely made up. I got this, uh, Executioner Mask from Spirit, which is this creepy fucking thing. But I thought it was awesome, so I bought it. It's like this black monstrous thing. And that Halloween was my goddaughter's first Halloween. Sorry, not her first Halloween. She was two years old. And she saw my costume and the mask, and she was crying. She was terrified of it. But eventually, like, like I was like, I took off the mask. I was like, it's just me. Hi. And I put it back on, and she giggled. She started realizing it wasn't that scary. I mean, it, it, it was scary, but it was just me. So really, like, that goes to show you that you don't gotta worry about it being too scary for kids, because kids eventually realize it's just pretend. You gotta teach them it's just pretend. Halloween, Halloween 2014, I was Nosferatu, got a bog cap, painted my face white, got some eyeliner. My fingers are already long and creepy and weird-like, so that's all right. And, uh, yeah. Halloween 2015, I was Hercules, and this year I'm going as Peter Pan, and kind of fucked up on the, the sleeve over here, so it's like Peter Pan going like Hercules, so man whore Peter Pan. Anyway, some memories from Halloween. Jeez, Halloween sure was different when we were younger, as in there were a lot more trick-or-treaters, and a lot was a lot more candy. Like, a lot. Like, I mean, this little thing... So much candy would like would be collected into it that this shitty plastic strap would just break because of the weight of the candy. That's how awesome it was that we'd have to bring pillowcases when this was full. Today, or as of recent, there's not that much trick or treaters. There's not much candy around. I bought a good amount of candy. Hopefully, we'll get a couple of trick or treaters. Probably not get too much, especially with this crazy fucking clown shit. Also, I don't let. I live in the neighborhood. There's a children's home in this neighborhood, but there's not, like, that many families. It's not, like, people my age, like, college kids. But Halloween was pretty badass. I think it all depends on where you're living. And to be fair, in my neighborhood, we were, like, the last generation of kids. <laughs> After that, no one had kids. Like, it was a lot of a lot of old people. But, um, by the way, this is not makeup. This is what happens when you're holding a cat in the garage and someone decides to test the fog machine and she claws the shit out of you. It wasn't rough sex either, so get your mind out of the gutter. Let's see what else, what else, what else? I remember one Halloween, I think it was the one in 2005 when I was a pirate. My other cousin, the one that went in a screen back in 2000, he went as a girl that year. Anyway, there was a, this house was so awesomely decorated, like inside and out. It was so spooky with all this fog and strobe lights. The couple that were in here, they were both dressed like vampires, and they played it straight. Like, you gotta give them an Oscar, because they kept, they played it completely straight. They didn't even say, here's your candy. They just opened, let us inside. We saw all the cool-ass decorations, got some candy, and we left. It was so cool. I remember, this was the year 2010, when I was dressed as a ghost. Oh, I gotta, actually, let's just go back to that Halloween in general. That's the Halloween that my family's always gonna remember. That year, I was a ghost. You know, I'm just gonna start saying names because there's too many cousins. My cousin Rydell was gonna wear a... <laughs> he was gonna wear you know, a costume, so... My cousin Jismel, the one who went to Scream, who's several years older than my cousin Rydell. He is six years older. I'm 
three years older than Rydell. A Buzz Lightyear costume from when he was like seven or eight. Rydell tried it on, it did not fit. So another one of my cousins, my cousin Roxo tried it on. This is a grown ass man who was 30 years old. He tried it on. It was really tight, but um, I mean, he managed to make it fit. So Rydell ended up going as Jesus Christ. He put on a wig, put on like a robe or whatever. And this was the year Toy Story uh, 3 came out. We, we first went to the mall. No, actually, I'll get on that later. Let's talk about what happened the night, the morning of Halloween, like early into the dawn. So we all went to my cousin, my aunt's house. Now this aunt is the mother of my cousin Rachel, who is five years older than me, and my and her brother Roxo, who is 15 years older than me. Um, well, four, almost like 14 and a half years older than me, almost 15. But we we were staying asleep at my aunt's house so that we could go trick or treating the next day on Halloween. I believe this was Halloween was on a Sunday. I thought there was Saturday or Sunday. I don't remember, but it was a weekend. So we were staying at my aunt's house, and here's the thing, I've always enjoyed sleeping on the sofa. Even at home sometimes, I would sleep on the sofa. Sometimes I did it because I saw a lizard in my room and I freaked me out, so I slept on the sofa. But I enjoyed sleeping on the sofa, so I told my, I would always tell my aunt, don't worry about getting in bed for me, just give me a blanket and a pillow, and I'll sleep on the sofa. And so I, I'm sleeping here in the living room, everybody else is at, in a bedroom, I, I don't remember where my brother was, but okay, let's see. Me, my brother, my mom, my sister, my aunt, her husband, my cousin Roxo, his wife, Roxo's daughter, my cousin Alondra, my cousin Rachel, and that's it. Oh, and right now, that's a lot of people in one house. But we were all sleeping, and I would have a alarm on my phone to wake me up in the morning. I would wake up at five in the morning to go to school. I would put an alarm that would be that would vary with the time of year. So this was October. I had a scary theme alarm. So I had a wolf, and this was around 5 in the morning, dark as hell, you hear, oh, echoing through the halls, and I'm dead asleep, but I hear it, and I'm like, what is it, oh, that's my alarm, I just go back to sleep. The the thing was on the kitchen island, I'm all the way here in the, on the sofa, I'm too tired to get up and turn it off, so I just sleep, and I completely knock out, but I'm not the only one that hears it. My cousin Rachel is all the way at the other side of the house inside her bedroom. I'm asleep until she hears, oh, and she wakes up. And she, she freaks the fuck out. And my cousin Rachel, by the way, is 21 years old at the time. She, uh, pretend this is a phone. My phone's charging, I don't feel like getting it. It's like I didn't feel like getting it when the alarm was going off. Pretend this is phone. She gets the phone, dials her mom, who is sleeping across the hall, but she's too scared to leave the bedroom. <laughs> So she grabs the phone, dials, and calls my aunt and goes, Mom, there's a wolf in the house. <laughs> my aunt is like, what? She wakes up, she gets up, she goes to my cousin's room, and she's like, the alarm stops. And it, it does like a five minute interval or something like that, but it stops. So my aunt hasn't heard anything. She goes over and she's like, Rachel, I think you've been watching way too many horror films. Just go back to bed. She's like, I swear I heard it. No, oh, no, you probably just imagined, you probably just dreamt it. Just go back to bed. So my aunt leaves the room. She's about to go back to bed, but she needs to uh, pee. So she goes into the bathroom and she sits on the toilet and then she hears, oh, echoing through the halls. And all of a sudden she's like, holy shit, she was right. There is a wolf in the house. <laughs> so she freaks the hell out. <laughs> she gets out of the bathroom. She wakes up her husband and then they go down to a... Um, I believe my cousin and his wife were sleeping in the garage. They, well, they, they closed off the garage door. They just made a wall and they made that into a bedroom. So she went down there and woke up my cousin. And they all got up and they went around looking and they would hear it and they were all like with a flashlight looking around for, for the stupid wolf. And then they see on the kitchen island, they hear it. Oh, they see on the kitchen island my phone buzzing. They see the light. Moving. They grab it and they say, it's an alarm, it's Erwin's phone. They breathe a sigh of relief and they laugh, and then <laughs> I remember this vaguely because I was ha I was partially awake. My cousin Rachel goes, I'm gonna kill him in the morning. <laughs> and they all told me of that story when I woke up and I was like, what? Like I said, I, I had heard it, I went back to sleep, I didn't think, think about it, I, I was used to it. 
Actually, funny story about that phone. In December, I made a Christmas ringtone that was Duck the whole with Yeah, I don't even want to sing it. I don't want to sing no Christmas music yet. But that was my ringtone. Something happened to my phone in December where it wasn't completely broken, but for whatever reason, it was messed up in a lot of ways. Like, I don't even, I think the camera wouldn't work right and you couldn't change the ringtone. So it was May already. It was May. It was almost the end of the school year. And I forgot to put my phone on vibrate or silent. <laughs> <laughs> and no one calls me and it starts ringing going Dick the Hodge with and the whole class freaking starts laughing. Ah, uh, I miss that phone. I miss all my old phones. They were all, they were all pieces of shit compared to today, but I mean they were fine back then before everybody had to have an iPhone or Android. Actually a lot of people already had iPhones by then, but uh, uh, I'm not an iPhone person. You can't make me get that shit. And my brother's a traitor because he used to be all Android and then I think last year or this year he switched to iPhone. I'm like, you treason. But anyway, that Halloween, during the day we went to the mall, we go trick-or-treating, which I personally think is pretty lame. I mean, it's okay if you take your kids to do it during the day, but you better take them to legit trick-or-treating, and we did go legit trick-or-treating. But at first we went to the mall, and my cousin Roxa was dressed as Buzz Lightyear, and like I mentioned before, this was uh, when Toy Story 3 came out, 2010, 2010. So it was all rage still. It came out in the summer, still very popular by October. So it was all the rage, and all the kids wanted to take a picture with him. It was hilarious. But, um, that Halloween... Now, remember how I used this spray paint on my hair? Well, it says it's flammable, so keep away from open flame. I'm not sure, even to this day, I'm not sure if that means don't spray it by an open flame, or just don't have your hair with it near an open flame. I'm assuming it's just spraying. I'm sure that your hair could catch on fire, but I'm, I don't think just simply having it near it. But... Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I'm not going to test that hypothesis. But I remember I had since I had that hairspray painted, we were trick or treating at night and we walked by this house which had they had like it it was nicely decorated, they had the tiki torches outside with actual fire. And as I walked by there I realized that there was an open flame. I felt my hair get like um my head get really hot. Maybe I was just imagining, maybe I was just nervous, maybe the weather was just hot. But I started to think, oh my god, my hair's about to catch on fire. <laughs> I did not want to go any further. I just stood there where everybody else went to that house. And then we went to this one house, and this guy opened the door really... He had all these dogs, so he opened it like just to tad, like just to crack. And you could see these dogs going, like barking, trying to come out. And he's like trying to push them back. Like, so he didn't open all the way. And he dropped this candy into like our bags. And some of it even fell on the floor. And I grabbed it, and I looked at it, and I said, Mary Jane. Which, by the way, for those that don't know, it's a popular old-fashioned brand of candy. I've never tried it before, but it's called Mary Jane. My dumbass thought this was marijuana. That this, that for real, this one man would give children marijuana for on Halloween. <laughs> so I told all the kids, hey guys, don't eat that. That's marijuana, that's weed, that's bad, that's not candy. It was... It's a common freaking brand of candy, and I was freaking out about it. I was like one of those out-of-touch old moms. And here's a, the the other part of the this Halloween story is we get to the house, and we're all eating our candy. And I've always kind of been like kind of a hypochondriac where I would overreact about my health or about what I'm eating or whatever I put into my body. So I uh, I was eating this. This candy was like one of those um, those gummy eyeballs, those chewy little gummy eyeballs. And one of the... I was eating it. I was chewing on it. I was reading the ingredients. And I read something called titanium dioxide. And um, you read this. It's uh, it's bizarre because there's all this high fructose corn syrup, sugar, blah, blah, blah. Titanium dioxide. What? Yep. That was an ingredient. And I read it. And I started... I went to my aunt and I said, Oh my god, I think I ate poison candy. She's like, what are you talking about? I ate candy with titanium dioxide. And she's like, what do you, what is that? I just ate poison candy. I'm gonna die. She's like, calm down, calm down. She's like, I'm like, please, call poison control. I'm gonna die. She's like, just look up what it is. So I did. I go to Google and I look up titanium dioxide. Turns out it's a very common thing in food coloring. So while it may not necessarily be good for you, I mean, half of the shit in the candy we eat isn't good for us. It's not exactly like I was eating poison candy. That was a little freak out I had. And, uh, so yeah. So, that concludes this here episode. And before I go, I want to talk about this book I checked out called First Words by Joyce Sutton. 
which is a poetry book, and the author grew up on a farm, and she wrote a bunch of poems about her childhood on that farm. Read, I think, is an awesome way to put those memories out in an art form so that people, so she could share it with the world. And, you know, since that's kind of relevant to this video series, just, you know, thought I'd mention it. And, uh, I started reading it yesterday. So, it's an enjoyable read. If you're into poetry, it's definitely recommend it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see you all next week.